So, um, nice to be here everyone, and yes I know health and safety is something some of you will all be groaning at, but um, uh, the reality is that the new legislation has been with us for over a year now, and so it's uh, just really time to just get on with it, because you haven't got a choice, it's legislation, like lots of other legislation being talked about tonight, and I'm sure you're all very aware that if you are certainly a business, uh, and that's what actually I'd like to get a little bit of a an idea. Who here considers themselves a business? So in other words, they pay a staff member as part of the club. Okay, right. So I um, want to be clear distinction between that tonight because it does make a difference, of course. Um, those of you who've put your hand up, you are considered to be a PCBU, a person conducting a business or undertaking. The rest of you are purely voluntary. And for you, Fortunately, there is no liability. Um, so just want to be clear about that. I'm going to stay around afterwards, guys. We've only got a very short time, but if you've got any questions specifically relating to your club, happy to answer that for you. Um, so just be aware that this legislation, as I said, is now a year old, uh, and the uh, legislation only talks about three groups of people now. Those of you who run a business are a PCBU. Um, within the business that you run, there will be some people who have the role as an officer. Now those officer roles are generally people who are the highest up within the organisation. So I'm not sure how you structure your organisation being uh, you know, rugby clubs, but if you think about a normal uh, business, it, the sort of person who'd be sitting in that role as an officer is a CEO, a board member, a director, an owner, maybe a general manager. So if you've got someone sitting in that particular role, for those of you who are businesses, then they will um, take the role of being the officer. And then, of course, the workers, who are the other people that would work for the organisation and may be paid. Now, it makes no difference if you've got one paid staff member or a thousand. The minute you pay somebody, you are a business. All right? So you've got to be quite clear about that. Um, the uh, other responsibility, of course, un under this new legislation is for other people. So the other people are, you know, the people who come and play rugby, your visitors, your volunteers, your contractors are also included in the workers as well. So you've got to think about the bigger picture about what your club um, involves in respect of, you know, where your responsibilities lie. So if you are somebody who is a... Um, um, and you can see down the bottom now I've just talked about enhanced health and safety activities within the new legislation. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment to you, just so you're, you're clear where you are. But if anyone in this room sitting here today does deem themselves to be an officer, then your role is one of due diligence within the club. And so in other words, you have a responsibility to make sure you are aware of everything that's going on within the business from a health and safety point of view. And there's a really good guide out um, by WorkSafe called um, the Good Governance for Directors. So anyone in that position should download this and have a look at it. And I would also suggest that you um, refer to the back of this book where there is a director's checklist. And that's the sort of thing that an officer should be following and making sure that the club is uh, doing what they should be doing in respect of health and safety. Uh, and these are the sort of due diligence things, but really it's just about keeping, um, keeping up to um, date with everything going on. And that will mean, of course, making sure that people are feeding things up to you, like you know, accidents, incidents, new hazards, risks, etc. within the club. And just in respect of the Health and Safety at Work Act, there's also a very, very good guideline that WorkSafe have put out now called the Introduction to the Health and Safety at Work Act. Even though it's a year old, if you're still struggling a little bit with terminology and understanding, this is downloadable from the WorkSafe website. Masses of resources there if you want to go and have a look. 
So just to be clear about uh, when does the Act apply and to whom, for example, so this slide up here tells you that it applies to people and organisations conducting a business or un undertaking that employs, even, it ha even if it has one or even a part-time employee, so you're quite clear about that. But the voluntary organisation that is entirely voluntary, that has no employees, is excluded from the Act. So we have a mix here today, obviously, of those clubs. Um, but your obligations are to take reasonably practicable steps to not put at risk those affected by the organisation's activities. And it's quite interesting just listening today about some of you talking about some of the things that you're doing in your club rooms, for example, hiring them out, you know, having other people within there. Uh, you've got to be thinking about health and safety when you're doing all those sorts of things because you have an obligation to make sure you do not place people at risk. Um, so sports clubs, as it mentions there, that build facilities that are used by members of the general public. You must ensure that any construction work that's being completed on the grounds is not putting potential users at risk. And also um, when you're doing any sort of things like sports tournaments now, you need to ensure that the, the tournament doesn't put anybody else at risk as well. So there is lots of really, really good stuff if you feel like Googling, um, and it's New Zealand related as well. Um, that sports foundations have put out around risk management of events. So any of you organising tournaments of any sort, you should take a look at something like this and just make sure that you've thought about everything when you are organising that event. You know, the, the sort of basic stuff that we would expect you to think about is everything from the weather, you know, what's going to happen if the weather becomes inclement and we can't carry on with the the tournament. Um, obviously, uh, you know, general emergencies, what are we going to do if someone's uh, hurt, needs medical attention, etc. Uh, and also just sort of giving a briefing to those that are organising and helping with the tournament as well, so that they clearly know what's going on. To be quite frank, even in your own personal lives now, if you're organising an event on behalf of a you know, any sort of sporting or activities type thing, there is an obligation of general uh, welfare care for people. So, you know, you should be making sure that those things are always covered. You know, the briefing, the, the, the weather, the emergencies, those types of things, which is, you know, what we would expect. So, Helen, just to clear that up, yep. you're saying there's no liability, nope. but there's an obligation. There's a general duty of care for everyone. So what? Voluntary organisation, completely voluntary, no employees. Yep. You're organising an event. Yep. You're obligated to take care. Something goes wrong, no liability. No liability under the Health and Safety at Work Act, but there are other legislations like the Criminal Act. Um, there's a whole lot of other legislation that potentially you could be held liable for. Highly unlikely, I might add, but you just want to make sure that you cannot just say, well, I don't have liability, so I don't need to care. You know, I think that general duty of care is just really important. Responsible. Yep, responsible. Yep, absolutely. Responsible host. Yep. And... Um, then for those organisations that aren't PCBU sitting here today, um, you know you don't have any liability or risk under the Act, but as it says here, you should still actively take steps to protect the health and safety of those affected by the activities. And you know, things like your, your obviously your volunteers and other people who use your services, um, it's the reputation of the organisation as well that you need to think about because you know these things fast make track to the press and that's the last thing that you want is to have your club's name um, splashed all over the paper. Um, and also that negligence claim around property damage or personal injury arising from gross negligence as well. So you know I was thinking about those 21sts and things like that, you can see where the Criminal Act can come in if there was to be, you know, something that happened to people who were attending that party. So just make sure that those things are all considered when you're um, using your venues for anything. And I'm sure you're all aware that with this new legislation comes 
significant penalties and these will of course only apply to those of you who are PCBUs. Um, interestingly these uh, fines and penalties when they came out a year ago made everyone run for cover obviously. Considerable hike. Our maximum fine under the old legislation was 500,000. We're up to 3 million with this one. Now it has not been tested in court yet but our first case which happens to be somebody from Rangiora or a business from Rangiora is about to go through the courts. So we've not seen this tested, keep a little bit of an eye out because I can uh, guarantee that the courts will make an example of a business just to show that they are serious about people taking responsibility. So just for those of clubs in here that are, are, are businesses, the corporation is the business, so the club, in other words. The middle column is the officer, so that senior person within the organisation, and the other column there is the worker. And you might have seen just it mooted um, in the press the other day, and I think it was some legal person talking about the All Blacks, and particularly the players, and um, asking about whether they have liability if their actions were to cause serious injury to someone. Interesting. It will be interesting to see if that actually ever gets tested. These are maximum fines up here, so highly unlikely that you would ever be in that region. However, they will be significant. So you know you'll soon see that when you see the um, the the press around the new fines. They're broken into three um, categories there, and of course the key thing is that you can't ensure against any of these fines. No one can. So you can only ensure against court costs and legal costs and a thing called reparation which is often awarded to people for grief and suffering but the actual court fine would have to come out of the club. And just finally today um, I'm aware that um, New Zealand Rugby made available to many of you um, health and safety systems, the templates for you to be able to use. Has anyone here made use of those templates at all that were around? I, I understand they're available for you. They probably need just a wee bit of updating. I had to look at a couple of them that were on the internet today that have still got some of the old legislation um, appearing in them. But they are certainly a very good tool for all of you to use and those of you who are businesses here today, you need to make sure you are using these. Because if there were to ever be a situation where WorkSafe, who are our regulator, had to come into the club to investigate an injury or God forbid a fatality, um, then what they are wanting to see is a paper trail. And if you haven't got that paper trail, you are in serious strife. So these are the core key things that are covered in a health and safety manual, plan, system, whatever you want to call it. And I just want to very quickly tell you the risk factor now is one of the big new focuses of the new legislation. So you have to think about all risk within your clubs and how you're going to manage that risk.